Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, and in this lesson I'm going to talk about the student-produced response questions, or SPR questions, that we see on the SAT math sections. These questions are very easy to recognize. They're not going to have answer choices. They'll have this box where the A, B, C, D normally are. Plus, next to each and every one of these SPR questions is a set of directions on how to fill them out. So we will get to these instructions, I will walk you through them, but before we do, I am super curious how many of you have actually read these instructions before? Give me a comment. If you if you have read them, when did you read them? Did you do it during the test preview feature when you were testing out the Blue Book app? Was it during your first practice test, during your first real test? And if you've never read them, how long have you been studying? I've been studying for six months and I've never read these instructions. I'd love to see comments like that just to kind of get a sense of where people are. The reason this is a big deal, it's not something to be proud of if you've never read it, is people actually do lose points on their SAT because they don't know how to follow those instructions because they never read them. I see it all the time on practice tests. People will, on their scratch paper, do all the work correctly, get the completely right answer for a math question, and then get it wrong on the test because they don't know how to enter that number in that box. And it can cost you 10 or 20 points. And if it's happening on the practice test, it's definitely happening on the real exam. So people are losing real points, getting worse SAT scores because they don't read these instructions. Plus, remember, the SAT as a whole, in, in all the kinds of questions in the math section and the reading section, is specifically testing your ability to read and follow instructions. And some of you have this bad habit where rather than reading instructions, you just assume that you know what the instructions are going to say, and you answer questions based on that. And that's not a 10 or 20 point problem, that's a 50 or 100 point problem. So if you never read these instructions, that may be the symptom of a larger issue that you've got to work on for your SAT. But let's start by remedying this by at least looking at these instructions for SPR questions. These are exactly what you'll see in the Blue Book app when you take a test. There are six rules, let's label them so it's easy to talk about them, and just go one by one. Number one here, if you find more than one correct answer, enter only one answer. This doesn't apply very often, but sometimes you will see a question that's asked like how, what is one possible solution to this equation? Just pick one, it really doesn't matter. However, if they do give you a specific instruction saying that they want a positive solution, a negative solution, an integer solution, make sure you follow that instruction. Number two, you can enter up to five characters for a positive answer and up to six characters, including the negative sign, for a negative answer. This is where people tend to get lost. So let's look at some examples. All of these numbers here would hit the character limit, okay? So we can just count them up, right? 1.345, that is five characters because the decimal point counts. Moving on, 123 slash five is five characters, the fraction slash counts. Now for negative numbers, we get an extra, right? So negative, 0.3456, six characters, we get the extra, but it's taken up by the negative. The decimal point still counts as one as well. And then negative 23 slash 56, again, six characters. So that is the maximum limit. The Blue Book app, as far as I know, will not let you go over that limit, so you don't have to really worry about that, but it is gonna come in handy for numbers three, four, and five that we understand what the character limit is. So let's look at those three rules together. They kind of all work together. Rule three. If your answer is a fraction that doesn't fit in the provided space, enter the decimal equivalent. So fraction doesn't fit, convert it to a decimal. But rule number four, if your answer is a decimal that doesn't fit in the provided space, enter it by truncating or rounding at the fourth digit. So truncate means to shorten. So literally you can just cut the decimal off at the fourth digit, not the fourth decimal place, the fourth digit. So we'll talk about more about that because that's the rule people mess up. But rule number five, if your answer is a mixed number such as three and a half, enter it as an improper fraction, seven halves, or its decimal equivalent, 3.5. So we can sometimes encounter all three of those rules just in one SPR question. If we got an answer that was like a thousand thirds, that is a fraction that from rule number three won't fit into the, the SPR box, right? That's six characters, 1,000 is four of them, the slash is five, the three is six. So we can't fit that in. Positive numbers, remember, only can get five characters. So if we put that on our calculator, we'll quickly see that it is equivalent to 333 and a third. Because of rule five, we can't put that in. That won't work because it's a mixed number. So we gotta convert it to a decimal completely. And that decimal is 333.3 repeating, right? Forever, thirds go on forever. But it's, that's an infinite decimal and we have a finite space, a finite box that we're gonna put that in. So that's where rule four comes in we need to put in four digits. And so it won't feel good to do this, but we're gonna truncate our decimal to wherever the Blue Book app cuts us off. So for 333 and a third, we're only gonna put in three, 
0.3, right? That's four digits, not four decimal places, and the fifth character is taken up by the decimal point. So this would be correct, but this is where people mess up in other places. So you've gotta make sure that you are following this rule. Now, before we move on to some of our examples, let's just look at rule six. It's nice and easy. Don't enter symbols such as a percent sign, comma, or dollar sign. I am pretty sure Blue Book doesn't even let you do that. So that's a rule that's pretty easy to follow. But they also gave us examples in a chart right below those set of instructions. And this is where most people lose their points is if they had just looked at this chart, they would have been fine. So I'll just talk about the things that are interesting about it. In this top row, they're mostly just saying don't enter mixed numbers because it doesn't know how to read that. But also notice that for 3.5, we could also enter it as 3.50. We don't need that extra zero. In fact, don't just go putting a million zeros in just to fill out the five character limit. But it does mean that, that it is equivalent. So you could do that if you really wanted to, but you don't need to because for most of these things, you don't have to use all five characters unless it is a repeating decimal. And that is where the fractions really come in. Something like thirds is going to be a real problem on the SAT if you don't know these rules. So my advice is if you get something weird like thirds, just enter it as two thirds as a fraction. You can also, if you really want, not even bother reducing it. So four sixths will work just the same as two thirds. I don't know why you do that, but you could. But the biggest issue is between this middle column and this end column is people just make an assumption that they can cut it off wherever they want. The big piece of advice here is do not round your answer. Don't round it. Now you can kind of round it, right? And, and that's kind of what we see in that middle box there, right? 0. 0.6666 is using all five characters for that repeating decimal. You can also enter it as 0. 0.6667 and round the last digit but you don't need to, so why bother? Don't do it, just truncate it, just shorten it wherever you run out of space. And if you use a leading zero before the decimal point, you will have fewer spots after the decimal point, but you still gotta use them all. The problem is when you just arbitrarily cut it off and just say, oh, 0 0.67, that's two thirds. No, it's not, not according to the SAT. This is where people lose points on their test. So please do not round decimals unless you are instructed to. And so let's look at some best practices for these SPR questions so we don't lose points unnecessarily. Like I just said, for repeating decimals, your best option is to use the fraction equivalent. Remember that Desmos and most calculators will have the ability to convert a decimal into a fraction. Use that and enter the fraction if you can. If you have to put a decimal in, do not round that decimal unless you're instructed to. If it says go to the nearest tenth or the nearest whole number, then yes, round it off. But if it doesn't, just keep typing until Blue Book stops you. You do not need to round the last digit. Just keep going and it will truncate it wherever you run out of characters. And you can check your answer in the answer preview area to make sure that you're entering it correctly in the Blue Book app for those SPR boxes. And like I said, don't worry about reducing every fraction. If you get something that's kind of normal, like four sixths, I would hope you would recognize that as two thirds pretty quickly. But if it's something you don't know and you're worried if it's gonna be divisible by seven or 11, don't worry about it. If it fits, you can enter it. And this isn't really a best practice, but it is a good piece of advice or a good reminder. The SPR questions are not harder than the multiple choice questions. There are easy SPRs, there are hard SPRs. The hardest thing about the SPRs is most people do not read the instructions and they're just kind of guessing as to what their answer needs to look like to put in that box. So don't be that person. Hopefully now that we've watched this lesson, we now know exactly how to fill these things out. And like I said, Following instructions is an important part of the SAT that goes well beyond these SPR questions. So it's not just about 10 or 20 points. If you were the kind of person who skips over the directions, that is gonna cost you points in the SAT. So make sure you subscribe to my channel because every time I teach a lesson, I'm always gonna tell you which instructions you cannot skip and which kinds of things will result in trap answers and careless mistakes. Once again, I am Mike Sattel. Please subscribe. And remember when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, Sattel for more. Thanks for watching.